As in the Uber again today, uh, we are touring Coptic in Cairo today. We'll share a little information about that when we get there. But one of the things that we're loving about um, taking Ubers everywhere um, is the flexibility. So we're not trying to find specific pickup drop-off spots ever, but also uh, we've taken different routes all around the city and so we get to see tons of different areas and I am loving that and then at night seeing everything lit up has been really cool as well. So we are having a ball. Yesterday we saw all of the Islamic like center of the city and today the Coptic Christian part is in the to-do list. So here is the gate to get into Coptic Cairo. There is um, police presence here. You'll also see all the buses, the tour buses that drop off here. If you are coming without a tour guide and figuring it out on Uber on your own, we put in the hanging church and they dropped us right here. So today's adventure in Coptic Cairo. So the Catholic Church was here. Not the Catholic Church, but the Coptic Catholic Church. Some differences there. Came in Egypt in about the year 4 AD, 3 or 4 by St. Mark um, and they were here until about 500 when it became an Islamic state and so now there's one area of the city that's set apart for the Coptic Christians and so we're going to go and explore that and show you around. So already we're pretty happy being here. The area is all pedestrian, there's no cars, it's got walls all the way around it. So it's a quiet place to walk. Um, it is one of the few places in Cairo that has some shade, <laughs> so that's nice too. But um, we are going around and seeing the church. So there's St. Mary's Church, there's the Church of St. George, um, there's the cemetery, <laughs> I'm not going to think of the word, and that's where we're headed right now. Um, we always enjoy walking through uh, cemeteries, weirdly enough. We had a great time when we were in Italy going through. You can actually learn a lot about a culture um, by reading a few gravestones and, and looking around. So we're gonna go experience that, but the sights are absolutely stunning. So as we're learning more about the history of Egypt, you can definitely see the Roman influence here, the Greek letters. There are still people being buried here today. So we just passed one that was just last year. So the gates you walk in, well, at least where our Uber dropped us. We put in the Hanging Church of Cairo as our drop-off spot. Um, and then you walk down one of the old street, one of the streets of old Cairo. And then the entrance leads you right in next to um, St. George's Church. And it's quite beautiful. It's a pretty grand spot to drop. It looks like the tour buses and stuff come here as well. There is a metro stop, so if you're feeling brave and want to do the metro instead, uh, the metro stop drops you off right here. You can actually hear it running every now and again. And then we're going to find the stairs down after this because there's the lower section of the of Coptic Cairo to explore as well. So you can actually see right here is the metro stop. Um, so the street here, just inside the wall, and you follow it up and over. So, really, like, good way to get in, like, hello, and a super convenient stop. You could also put that stop in as, like, your Uber stop, and they'll get you as close as they can outside the gate. Coming down the stairs from St. George's, this direction heads you to St. Mary's through the cemetery. We're going to head out this way and go to the lower section. So we've walked out the gate, the metro station we showed you is that way, and then these stairs down 
don't confuse with the metro. This is actually how you get to the lower part of the Coptic Cairo. There are seven churches here, as you can see. The first two we went to are St. Mary's and to the um, St. George's. And now we're going to go down and you can get all, all the rest of them are down in the underneath. So you can peruse the library here. There are several different languages if you're into books. This is mostly covered and really quite cool on this hot day, so it's pretty nice. Got interrupted with questions before, but the books span everything from guidebooks on different areas of Egypt to a whole book about pugs, so you can find a lot. It's kind of a fun, unique souvenir, but also kind of fun to walk through and have the books lining the hallways here as you enter into the heart of Coptic Cairo. Okay, so we've just come here, it is part of the monastery, and then underneath, so you can go in there as well. So we're gonna go check that out, but the door here is beautiful. It said take the sandals off your feet. It said please take off It said please take the sandals off the feet. So we went into the church of St. Barbara. It is beautiful, as you saw. There is an area, like, has some relics you can go in, but you do have to remove your shoes. Um, it does not. I anyway, we are just wandering the twists and turns. Then we'll make our way back out towards the Coptic Museum and the Hanging Church. The Hanging Church is the most famous of the churches here because one of the names is literally like has no foundation. It's out just hanging over the edge. And there's like a glass floor where you can see that. So we'll make our way there. But for right now, we're wandering just through the neighborhood out past the churches. Now, one of the other things that you will see here is a synagogue, which seems a little strange being in a Christian area, but when the Jewish community was looking for a place to build a synagogue, it's the only place that they were able to buy them. So it's someone from the church sold it to them. Um, it's kind of a fun story if you want to look that up. But, um, we got here, it looks even a little bit more residential. Like we just passed by the school which is the off the beaten path you won't get from a tour guide that we really like to enjoy and explore. So up behind St. Barbara's, um, you can see these are mausoleums. Um, so we just kind of wandered up the stairs here to see what it was. Um, it's they're quite old, beautiful area. So we're going to work our way back towards the church. So this unassuming entrance here is to... Um, <laughs> the Church of St. Barbara, and that's who you can see here. And just next door is the entrance to the synagogue. We were a little disappointed because the synagogue is closed. Um, they do have, like, they tell about the story of, of Moses there, and like, where the guy claimed that they have, like, the basket of Moses. As with any religious things, there's relics in several places, I'm sure. <laughs> but, um, the architecture in there is supposed to be amazing. They do have one of the oldest versions of the Torah um, in Coptic Cairo in the synagogue, but unfortunately, not something we get to see today because it's closed for renovations. The next on the list is the Cavern Church. So we'll head down into there. It is nice that everything is, is written out so you can understand why this church is so important. So this one has um, is the Cavern Church and has ties to Mary, Jesus, and Joseph and their stay in Egypt to escape King Herod. If you are religious, this is a great way, or if you especially are Christian religious, Coptic Cairo is a great way to see a lot of the history and like the stories from, from Christ's time. So they have things like a well that Mary, Joseph, and Jesus sort of drank from. He's afraid Don't glass. step on the glass. And then you also have here where we can go down into the cavern, which is why it's called the Cavern Church. And that would have been where um, they stayed when they were in Egypt. So we love learning different history from different religions. We really enjoyed learning about Ramadan when we've been here. We're enjoying learning about how the Coptic Christians are. Um, so whether or not it's something that aligns with your own personal faith, it's still kind of a cool thing to experience. and. Um, it's a beautiful area to see the different architecture and the contrast from other places around the city.
you need to watch your step going up and your head coming up and down because it's not hard. But there are plenty of gift shops here. This one is one of the biggest that we've seen. And it's not really even half of it. So if that's souvenirs or something you want in a quiet and cool area out of the sun, a decent option. So definitely a higher price than if you were to go out to the bazaar. So we've come back up the stairs, we've passed the original entrance there, and we are headed down the street towards the Hanging Church and the Coptic Museum. Watch your step for animal droppings. Um, we are going to try to stop and find some lunch first. Heard there's great options here, so we'll go check that out, and then we'll continue our tour. Um, we prefer not to have a tour guide for things like this, and we're having a great time going without one. Um, so if you're curious, can you do Cairo without a tour guide? We're on day two without a guide. I've never once thought that we needed one. I do research a little bit before we get each night. I research what we want to know for the next day so that it has some background. That way if there's no plaques or anything, we know what we're seeing. But outside of that, half of tours, at least who we've had, when we've gone on tours in other countries, they seem made up anyway. So. <laughs> So this is part of the Babylon Fortress. It was built by the Romans. The entrance to the Coptic um, hanging church is here. And it was actually built on the walls of this fortress just hovering over them, which is where it got its name. But um, love seeing how the world connects um, through history and the expansion of the Roman Empire is everywhere. We've made it through to the hanging church. Absolutely beautiful in here. They do have an elevator if you can't walk up on your own. The hand carved details here are stunning. Towers here already, and they just built this church on top of the towers. Walking back from whence we came, we are headed to the old Cairo restaurant and cafe here, and we'll grab us some food. That's it. Rates well on Google and is a one dollar sign, which is our favorite. <laughs> And then just through the gates here is where we had our taxi drop. This looks good. So we've got a nice seat in the shade. We've got our lunch ordered. There's a good breeze through here. Uh, we're crazy about the kebabs. So Roxy's got kebabs coming. Uh, the kofta is something we really enjoy. It's like a, it's actually similar to the mincemeat we had in Romania. Um, and it, yeah, it's like a sausage. It's all rolled together flipping delicious and then the mixed meat for papa here and it has chicken and the kofta and a couple other things on that um, with that the way to eat it here is everything's served with bread and a tahini sauce so you kind of rip the bread into little pieces and make a pocket and then you hold it with your right hand and scoop up a piece of your meat and the sauce and the meat and eat it all so I enjoy it quite well, but that also means that you'll probably want to bring some hand sanitizer if you plan on eating like the locals. Um, make sure you get your hands clean before you dig into your meals. So with that, the three things we found that are super helpful to keep on hand all the time with the kids, especially as wet wipes, hand sanitizer, and then a lot of the bathrooms don't have anything for the girls, so some tissues are helpful. So your meals will come with bread. We've got some baba ganoush. Oh, the dill in that is so fresh, it's delicious. Fresh salad. Lance's meal came with fries. We've got fries. Uh, this is the tahini and an oil, so we'll just mix that around. And then these are uh, pickled spicy peppers. Do they taste like the ones we had in Mexico? And then the salad. So we'll get our meat and then just little rip at a time. So what I saw, the 
correct way to eat. If I can tear it off. Ren, help me out. Ren, hold this. Okay, I'll try to show you. You take a little piece and you're going to fold it up like this. Keeps your fingers clean and swoops up your food. Go for it. So, my brother did me to eat this. Came with the spicy carrots. No. No crying. Buy it in half. Okay, go for it. When we travel places, we tend to stay in Airbnbs We has a kitchen, cuts down on our cost quite a bit to be able to make food at home. However, in Egypt, we're finding that that might be unnecessary. So, uh, we just did the math for our lunch. It's nice. So, we have our breakfast food, though, at home, which yeah. is great. Because you wake can up wake up, eat. have food ready to go eat, have a cup of coffee. Um, but as far as the eating out meals, I mean... We just got two cappuccinos, three, uh, two bottles of water, mm -hmm. two sodas, and meals for five people, and we were a total of uh, $24. So, so, for a family of five, you really can't eat. beat that. <laughs> Not to mention, I feel like I stuffed myself like Stuff it's not it's not uh we wanted to eat cheap so we didn't buy enough food situation we all had plenty of food not to mention it's delicious roxy's chicken shawarma wrap was delicious i do like the they dip delicious. Some food's not heavy too it's not so you eat it and like you don't feel Different. like i feel full but i'm not like Ugh. yeah you have to roll you out of the restaurant <laughs> anyway we're on to the the Coptic Museum of Cairo. So we've done a little bit of back and forth on this street today. Um, if you wanted to keep it like super in order, you could definitely start at the Hanging Church, hit the Coptic Museum, and work your way back out. Sorry, I'm but we knew we'd want to walk. Oh, out. <laughs> we knew we wanted to walk out towards the, and eat lunch, and then walk back towards. Now it's a beautiful day. We don't mind the walk, and it's literally like a three-minute back and forth. It's very nice here. I love it. <laughs> the bad news. The Coptic Museum is 3 o'clock and it seems like it is closed. So we did just see like tons of tour groups leaving. Um, but it looks like even though you could stay in there once you were in, we missed the cutoff. So we'll have to decide if we want to come back to that. So we did get a late start today because we were up at, running around the bazaar yesterday like at which was so fun. But because of that, tired kids we got a late start otherwise we would have started at the museum and worked our way back towards lunch which is what we would recommend you do if you make it here thanks for touring Coptic Cairo with us follow along as we hit the rest of Egypt without a tour guide and don't forget to subscribe <laughs>